Hey, spin enthusiasts. So this was a totally unplanned live. I shouldn't say totally unplanned because actually I planned for a live originally and I was going to have a guest for you guys tonight and I don't have a guest tonight, but I wanted to come say hi to all of you because it's been a while since we did a live. There's been a lot of stuff going on and I've just been super, super busy and I know a lot of people who would be guests are like doing all kinds of crazy things. So I just wanted to come on and talk to you guys. I actually had a request from one of our followers to kind of tell you the Spintronics story. And that's what I wanted to come talk to you about for a little bit. I won't be on for super long. So it's nice to see you guys. Hello, Sam. Hello, Chris. Hello, Bernice. Hello, everyone. <laughs> It's so nice to see everybody. So basically what happened was like a long time ago, like, oh my gosh, how long ago now? It's been like 12 years now or something, 13 years. This will be 13 years, I think. Uh, it was 2008 was when Spintronics actually started. So a long time ago, I had this idea that I wanted to have my own independent guard program. And I, I really wanted to be a guard instructor but, and I was teaching at multiple different high schools kind of in the area where I live. And I wanted that, that was like my dream job. I wanted to be a guard instructor and that's what I wanted to do so much. And I got that so-called dream job and started to realize like, it's not really as much of a dream as you would think. Like I wasn't making very much money doing it. In fact, sometimes like they, I didn't even get paid for some of the jobs that I did back then. And that was rough, very, very rough. So what I decided to do was just to put together my own team. And that way I could kind of train kids from multiple different schools since I was working with different schools. And I could also do uh, my own like scheduling and stuff because we were always having to fight for gym time and fight for practice field time. And it was just all of the normal like problems that you guys have with all of your color guards. I was having these problems across like six different schools in the area. So I wanted to put together something, but the thing is like there was no consistency of training programs so we started with the weekend camp and Sam, who's actually here right now, I'm going to wave at Sam. Hello, my dear. Uh, Sam came with me to my very first weekend camp and we put together this weekend camp and invited students from all over South Central Missouri. We had students come from Northern Arkansas. We had students come from Memphis, Tennessee, and it was a really big popular thing. So we did it again the next year too. And it was just like a one weekend deal. It was it wasn't even meant to be anything like more than that. It was meant to be a one weekend deal, but it was super, hi Sam, Sam saying hi. <laughs> it was super fun and everybody liked it. So we did it again. And then, you know, I was at, uh, oh my gosh, I was at the Bands of America Summer Symposium, the Music for All Summer Symposium, I believe is what it's called officially and I was at the color guard instructor academy the next year it was like our th it was going to be our third year coming up on and one of the awesome things that we did at the CGIA which I, I haven't been there in years so I don't know if they still even do this but if they do it's it was a really awesome thing so if you guys are watching this like do this because it was so great they did like an independent consultation thing where you got to talk one on one with one of the instructors of the CGIA and kind of talk about your program and where it's going and so on. And I was just kind of like, I don't know what I want to do with all this because I have all these different programs. I have six different guards I'm teaching and they're all spread out and everything's so different between all of them. And I just want to make something awesome happen here and bring them all together. And since our camp, the very first year we had camp, we had 25 students. And then I think we had, oh gosh, we had more than that the second year. I want to say we had closer to 40 the second year. But I was telling them this and they were like, oh, well, if you have that many kids show up for camp, surely you could get 10 students to show up for a winter guard for an independent team. And so that's what we did. We basically just 
started advertising at all the schools that we were going to start an independent winter guard and a lot of oh my gosh a lot of students came out we had 18 on the guard the very first year and we did prisoner was our show it was the song prisoner by jeffrey star I look back on it now and I'm like, man, what, what were we thinking? But at the same time, it's like, it, you know, we were just trying to do color guard the best way we knew how. And, um, uh, it was, there was a lot of stuff just going on. So we, we did prisoner and then, oh my gosh, after that, we had a whole like staff, a whole staff, like remix up or whatever our our we our camp staff was like different from our our winter guard staff though because my camp staff were people I had marched drum corps with and so I brought them in from all these different areas and they you know so they were coming from like Memphis and they were coming from Indiana and like all over the place but they were awesome to be able to come in and like do stuff but my winter guard staff needed to be local because obviously we had like practice every weekend and stuff like that. So it was different. So I had diff- I had a different staff and then the second year, so we we had camp and camp was so awesome that year. That was the year we did firework. Oh my gosh, and we brought in so many different so many new people. We grew so much. I want to say that was the that was our really like that was the biggest year we had when we had it the third year. So there was a lot of kids who came out for that camp. And, oh, I just remember being really stressed out because we were trying to keep the camp dates kind of the same as the winter guard dates or as, as they had been the last couple of years. And we did not think about the fact that it was like right in the middle of winter guard season. <laughs> so here we were like still doing winter guard season and then we were throwing a camp right in the middle of it. And then we ended up moving on from that and and like going to state championships after the camp like that was oh when I think about how stressful that was I'm just like how did I even manage I don't know I do I do not know and I wasn't quite working full-time yet that was that was probably how <laughs> that was probably how it happened but yeah that was oh man we've had 10 competitive seasons now so that was a long time ago um <clears throat> but when we had our staff change over Um, Anna came on the second year and that honestly that changed everything she was so awesome in helping me get this group organized because I I honest to goodness had no idea what I was doing and um, also the second year that's when we applied for our 501c3 and we got verified as a a state and federal not-for-profit excuse me so yeah it just we kept growing and and like making stuff happen basically <laughs> because you're the Jackie I do I do a lot of stuff <laughs> this is not this is not wrong this is very very correct I do a lot of stuff and it's it's good though I think it's good for me to like keep busy and keep active all the time so uh yeah that's kind of the foundation of it there's I mean there's a lot more obviously to it there's been a lot more to my career I had some people I was talking to on TikTok today about career as a color guard instructor and it is so hard to have a career as a color guard instructor like you really it doesn't there's not a lot of money involved and you really you have to be a good teacher and I know a lot who are not who like they they're just like oh yeah I know how to do color guard they're not necessarily a teacher but they're just asked to do color guard because they did color guard in high school or whatever and it's 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 a lot more than than just that it's a lot more than just knowing how the fly goes around so oh Sam yes thank you Sam says you're that amazing I try I really do um So yeah, you could totally start your own winter guard. Um, So I'm kind of like looking at comments now. You can totally start your own winter guard. Especially if you're at a university, you could start an independent winter guard. I think if we had some sort of affiliation with the university when we first started, it might have been easier to get off the ground because we had no finances and no budget. In fact, the uh, I made the mistake of charging for the very first year. You guys eat your hearts out on this. The very first year of Spintronics, member fees were $30 a person. (laughs) 
oh my goodness, it was so like, I had no idea of the costs that were going to be involved. And I hadn't like sat down and, and figured it all up. I kind of sat down and figured up like, okay, this is how much t-shirts are going to cost. And this is how much our circuit fee is going to be. And that was literally it. We borrowed everything in the beginning. We borrowed all of our flagpoles. Um, We had a floor, which was donated, but that was it. Like that was all we had was a floor, which is something normally like they do not like people don't have when they start out. You don't have a floor. You just have your flags or whatever. But we had a floor and I borrowed some jazz pants and I had I bought shoes for everybody out of my own personal, like, out of my pocket. And I bought everyone Cooler Swift jazz sneakers. And that was a lot of money out of my pocket to do. We ate pancakes every single weekend because that's pretty much all I was good at cooking. And I would get up early and I would cook breakfast. I would cook pancakes and frozen sausage. (laughs) And everyone got very tired of that very quickly, but it was a lot, it was a lot of fun. Uh, Yeah, I mean, and then we, of course, we had our struggles, and we got to MCCGA, and we were trying so hard to be competitive, and I kind of, when I was young and just starting out, I took a lot of things very personally, and I was like, oh, yeah, the judges just don't like us, and it's like, that really wasn't it. We just really didn't understand. Like I personally didn't understand the judges sheets and like what they were looking for. Um, I didn't have that very first year. I didn't have a staff that really knew what they were doing. They were just kind of there to be helpful and support me as much as they could. And uh, yeah, they weren't supporting me very well at all though. <laughs> so Oh, I hate I hate to say bad things about anybody, but that first staff we had consisted of my fiance and his girlfriend who I didn't know his was his girlfriend. So there's the real tea. If you're wanting to know about Spintronics tea, that's that's the stuff right there. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we so we had a we ended up putting putting together a good show. We got I think we got fourth place in our class the our first year. Or maybe we got third place. I cannot remember now. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my trivia my trivia brain is out for her today for some reason. But we did all of that stuff. And, and then, you know, we just kept going. We just kept, like, trying. And I would go to some of the, like, a lot of circuits offer, like, educational opportunities. And our circuit was no different. They offered some educational opportunities. They had, like, clinic days where instructors could come in and learn from their judges. And their judges kind of put on these clinic days. So they were like hey, come in to Springfield on a Saturday, which Springfield is really far for us. It's like uh, an hour and a half, two hour drive. And Springfield is, so So we'd go, I'd go to Springfield and like spend four or six hours there trying to learn how to read judges sheets and figure it out. And then we did a lot better after that. We ended up in, um, well, in our second year, we got second place in our class. And then in our third year, we got third place in our class. So it was pretty cool to be able to like get some medals out of it. And, you know, a lot of what happened was a lot of the people who like were there the first year, like once I started realizing like the financial cost of it and actually like made our fees a little bit higher, we ended up having to, um, we, we lost quite a few of our students because this is a really rural area people don't make a lot of money here. And as much as, you know, we'd try to get scholarships and stuff together, we couldn't always do that. So we ended up losing a lot of our students from the first year where we had 18. And then we had, I think we had eight the next year after that in our second year. So that was a big, like, that was kind of a a thing where we were like, whoa, we need to regroup and try this differently. And that's when like the staff changeover happened. Basically, my ex fiance and I broke up and he went and he actually got married to his girlfriend. So, you know, happy for them, whatever, do your thing. Um, But then, you know, Anna came in and and she helped me like start to actually build the team. We did that. That's where we started doing our team building. We started doing like our icebreakers and things and not just like treating these students as like robots who perform, perform, perform and practice, 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 but actually like making a family out of it basically and that honestly changed so much and as we kept going we started to attract attention obviously online uh and in 2015 we had a really good show our we had the um 
Shatter Me show. It was Lindsey Sterling's song. And, oh my gosh, I don't even remember what it was about that show that was just so good. It just kind of came together. Uh, I, Leah came on and did the choreography again. She was the choreographer, the dance choreographer for a few years. And she did a great job with that. And, you know, we all just kind of meshed together really well, Leah and Anna and I. And that was so good. Um, I was teaching dance classes at the studio that, so that was like, another thing was like, I was kind of getting my dance instructor chops up to par when I did that. And I think that helped a lot in our, our movement scores at least. So, but yeah, in 2015, we got a lot of attention online and somebody who I marched with (laughs) Justin, which Justin's been on the live a couple times. So if you guys have like, want to go back and see some of uh, me talking to Justin, he was just watching us online. And he was like, Hey, I am a show designer. And you know, we marched blue stars together back in the day. And we were friends, like, we sat kind of catty corner across from each other on the bus. And we were friends and we were in the rifle line together. And it was just, it was really serendipitous, I think, that I was able to, like, connect with Justin again after all these years, and he lived in Indiana, but he was like, oh, yeah, I'm a show designer, like, I will design your show for you, like, let's put this together and do this, I want to be a part of Spintronics, and so that's what we did, so Justin started designing our shows with Spectrum, and we were not ready. <laughs> that's that's all I got to say about Spectrum is we were not ready for that year. That was such a good show, such a good show. And there were so many things we weren't ready for and so many things that went wrong. You know, our uniforms weren't what we expected and uh, our flags kept like falling apart. So I was constantly sewing them. The flags that we use were actually the flags that you guys ha- keep going nuts over in that Hogwarts TikTok because... They We had flags of every color for our Spectrum show. Our prop didn't do what we wanted it to do. Things fell out of the prop regularly. It fell apart regularly. <laughs> it didn't roll easily across the floor. There was just so much. Oh, my gosh. So, anyway, that was definitely another learning year for us. And But I think going forward from that, we've only grown every year. You know, we had um, after... Spectrum in 2016. In 2017, we ended up winning our class, and that was the first time we'd gotten gold with the girl from Ipanema. And, you know, of course, in in there, I had moved to Brazil over the summer. I was in the Olympics, and that's, like, a whole other different story. If you're, like, super want to know about me living in Brazil and my Olympics story and everything, I literally vlogged the whole thing, and it's on the Spintronics YouTube channel, so you can go just go to the YouTube channel, check it out and watch all of my, (laughs) all of my exciting Brazilian adventures when I was living down there. Um, I do speak Portuguese, eu falo português, muito bem, então, uh, anyway, I, I do still, I still practice my Portuguese when I get a chance to, but, uh, yeah, I made a lot of friends down there and a lot of friends in the marching band world. So anyway, yeah, that's, I mean, I, I was, this was supposed to be like the story of our beginning, but there's, there's so much to it. It's so, there's so much to Spintronics in general. And we did our 10 year anniversary show last year. And when we sat down to try to decide and, and figure out what we wanted to do for our 10 year anniversary, it's like, what can we do? Like, how do we sum up the last 10 years of everything that we've been through and everything that we've done with a show. And uh, I was talking to Michael Vasquez from, uh, well, he was one of the founders of ATX Guard. And he is, uh, and he's just been, he's been a good influence on our team the last couple of years too. And he suggested, well, what did you do for your first show? Which of course, you know, I said earlier, we did the prisoner show. And he said, well, why don't you do the opposite of whatever you did for your first show? Oh my gosh, mind-boggling, mind-blowing thing. So we did a show called Freedom. We used the song Freedom 90 by George Michael, but as sang by uh, the cast of Pitch Perfect. And honestly, I feel like Freedom was our most incredible production that we've had yet. It was so well put together and well thought out. And 
it was just a beautiful, it was a beautiful show. And I'm really, really disappointed that we didn't get to take it to uh, championships and see how we do there and take it to, you know, we were talking about going possibly to WGI if the whole Corona cancellation nonsense hadn't happened. And I know so many people had issues and and so many, everybody's seasons got canceled. So, you know, everybody went through it and don't want anyone to feel pity for us more than anybody else. But in my mind, it was just like, well, of course, this is going to happen during our 10th anniversary season. You know, this we've been looking forward to for so long. Uh, But yeah, it's it's been such a really cool thing, like to kind of look back on all of these years, you know, 10 years of competitions, two more years before that. But Spintronics, you know, when when we started with the competition team, this is like, this is blown way more into what more than I ever imagined that it could have been. Um, it was 2014 that I decided to really like invest in the YouTube channel and start making instructional videos. And so I, <laughs> I watch Casey Neistat a lot now <laughs> too. Um, but his advice is always just post every day, post every single day. And that was like a new concept back then, kind of like, like we could post every day and people aren't going to get tired of us. Like, no, they're not going to see every single video you post every day. So they're not going to get tired of it. And so I followed that advice and I posted every single day, the entire summer of 2014. Then after the summer was over, I continued posting once a week just so I would keep something up. And then in 2015, I, again, over the summer, I posted every single day. Now, keep in mind, I was also teaching drum corps at the time. So it was really, really hard. I would have like a day and I would film like a week's worth of videos on that one day and edit all of them. And then I would like schedule them to upload on each independent day, like so that it would have all of the different days and we would have a post every single day. And I... It, that was a lot of work. It was exhausting. I don't think I could go back to posting a full YouTube instructional video every single day at the point, like, especially now with how much I do now and, and how I have a full-time job and everything. But it was very, very good for us. And it got a lot of exposure. Then in 2016, Anna suggested that we have a weekly vlog. So we were doing instructional videos every week and we added doing a vlog every week and we vlogged all of our rehearsals so people could see what we did because I think a lot of people didn't realize like our guard and our rehearsals and the way we do things like there are a lot of similarities but because of where we are and because of like how we're set up we have a lot of different types of challenges than what normal guards have because a lot of times color guard springs up in more it, it small color guards will spring up in rural areas, but a lot of times color guards that are like independent guards or big production guards spring up in places where there's a lot of money, where people can afford to do that kind of thing. And that's not here. <laughs> that's definitely not here. So yeah, just kind of showing people what we do and what we're made of and how we're different was really, really cool for the team. And so the vlog started in 2016. And I mean, honestly, the rest is history. You can totally watch all of the vlogs. They're still on the YouTube channel. And there's some other, like, there's clips and things from before 2016. And there's all of our shows from the very beginning. All the shows are on YouTube. Um, <coughs> but all of the vlogs started in 2016. So if you guys have questions, like, let me know stuff. I can't do Spintronics just because it's so far away. Yeah, it, I mean, we are literally in the middle of nowhere. When we fly staff in and we have to, like, go drive to Springfield to pick them up. And like I said, we're, like, an hour and a half, two hours from Springfield. I love your videos. I'm a band director and color guard instructor. I've used your stuff every year when I make routines. Oh, that is so sweet. Thank you so much. That's why it's there. One of the things when I was in color guard, when I was a performer that I didn't understand was I was going to clinics and I would go to drum corps clinics and I would go to winter guard clinics and I would go to clinics at other schools and I'd be like learning all this cool new stuff. And then the instructors at these clinics would be like, don't you dare put this in your color guard routines at home when you go home. And I was just like, well, then why am I here? Why are you teaching me this? If you're going to then tell me I can't use it, like that's insane to me. And I don't want color guard to be like that. Color guard is not this like 
privatized thing. This is something that so many people get enjoyment out of all over the world. I, at, at the time, I was thinking all over the country, but I had no idea of the mass like passion for color guard all over the world. And and now I understand a lot better, like Costa Rica and and Puerto Rico and Guatemala, Indonesia and the Philippines. There's so many. So that was kind of the culture. So yeah, so you're saying why? Like why? That was what I was saying was why. But that was kind of the culture of Color Guard. Like these are my twirls and this is what my choreography looks like and this is my style. And there's all these Color Guard instructors out there trying to like make their mark as like this is mine and this is how I do things in Color Guard. And I was like, if we're going to grow as a, as an activity, as a sport, we need to be able to share with each other and we need to be able to grow from each other. So I've used some of the things I learned from my winter show. Yes, please, please. That is like that. I love it so much. Like go to clinics, learn new things, and then take it home, teach it to your team, put it in your shows. Like that is, that is winter guard at its finest. And there's been like this horrible, um, I don't know, stigma, I guess, around stealing in color guard. And like, yeah, you don't want to rip off somebody's show, twirl for twirl, um, or spin for spin. That's something else that's driven me crazy about the color guard culture. Like, like, don't get nitpicky about spinning versus twirling. They are two different things, but those terms can be used interchangeably because of the way that they are. So anyways, that's a whole different topic for a whole different video. Uh, but you want to be able to use other people's choreography without stealing, without like ripping off their whole show, but saying, hey, I really like the way they transitioned from that flag into this other flag. I'm going to take that and I'm going to do that in my show where I do this transition from one flag to the next but I'm going to have different flags or I'm going to have a different twirl that goes into it, or I'm going to spin out of it or something, just something different. Um, you don't want to, you don't want to limit yourself to only what you know. And that's something I've always, I've never wanted to do either. I don't want to limit myself to only what I know. So I like to bring in other choreographers. I like to bring in other people to train. And so that's what we do. Thank you guys for making videos. I often look at your videos to learn new skills. Well, you are welcome. <laughs> Thank you for learning from our videos. You know, I, we're always taking requests, of course. Uh, we are currently doing, we're, we've really backed off and, and we've really like, uh, we're not posting as much on YouTube right now just because there's so many other things going on. Um, but we do try to do at least one video a week on YouTube. So make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel because we're doing the Genesis flag giveaway. Thanks to Style Plus, they are donating 10 Genesis flags for us to give away to Spintronics followers. And so you need to be following us and Style Plus on YouTube and Instagram. So let's build our audience. You know, we've been growing quite a bit, especially since our TikTok has been growing. So it's cool. Um, do you know a good place to buy relatively inexpensive six foot poles? Yes, <laughs> your local lumber yard. That's something a lot of people don't realize. In fact, half the poles that we use at Spintronics are actually uh, aluminum conduit. And they are if you go to the lumber yard, and you ask for one inch diameter aluminum conduit, they will get them and they will even cut them to six foot lengths for you. So you can go do that if you're like really, really, really on a budget. Um, uh, other than that, I really like band shops poles a lot. They are, they are, do, they do a really good job and, um, yeah, yeah. Band shop. Yes. <laughs> we're, everybody's, we're getting some comments in there. Yeah. Yeah. Yay. TikTok. TikTok has honestly changed the face of social media so much and it's brought in, I feel like it's brought in a whole new generation. You know, there's those of us who started on Facebook, um, like the early millennials and YouTube and that sort of thing. And then you've got like, are your like younger millennials who like were more on into Vine and Snapchat and what have you and Instagram and Instagram is interesting because it's kind of been able to span the generations somehow and stay relevant, which is cool. Um, but yeah, TikTok really does a good job, I think, of bringing Gen Z into the social media world. And I love I love Color Guard TikToks. I love them so much. That's why I spend so much time watching them and then posting my reactions. I need to go watch some more because I don't think I have any in my drafts. Or, I mean, I have a ton in my drafts, but they're just like sitting there waiting for me to watch them. 
and I haven't had time to. It's just been crazy. Um, but yeah, so, uh, gosh, this is Bentronic story is, there's so much more to it. There's so, it's so much more, so much more complex and wonderful than just, you know, a little 30 minute, uh, podcast style video can, can tell you about it because there's, there is, there's so much to it. So I really, I'm, I'm excited to be able to get some more lives going. Um, I have a plan for next week because next week's live is going to be our giveaway. So at some point unannounced between now and next Thursday, which I think I think yesterday it was, I said it'll be within five days. So it'll be within four days now. Uh, we will be posting the entry form on our story on Instagram. Our story is on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and now LinkedIn as well has a story. So I've been posting everything and just going through there. Yeah, uh, yeah, Gen Z basically does run TikTok. And that's as well they should. <laughs> as well they should. Uh, band shops polls are very, very well balanced. I, I agree. They are, they are well balanced. Um, there, I think there something about the aluminum they use is maybe more dense. I don't know. I haven't actually like asked them about it to be like, Hey, why, why are your polls so much better? But I don't know. Um, had to balance your own flags. You do have to put weights in, in flags still, regardless of whether you get like the conduit or you get flag poles or whatever. Um, you do have to put weights in your flags in both ends because you need a weight to balance out your flag, your silk, because the silk drags. And so if you want it to go around, you've got to weight it properly. But anyway, I have so many videos on how to do flag weighting and, and all that sort of stuff. So if you're really interested in that sort of stuff, get on YouTube, check that out. Okay. Yeah. Honestly, we have the best fans. Spin enthusiasts are the best. If you are a spin enthusiast and you want to show it proud, then go on our website. And if you go to our made to order store in our website, we have these awesome shirts that say spin enthusiast on them. And then there's the spin enthusiast 2.0 shirts also. And those also say spin enthusiast. It's just a different font, that sort of thing. So Oh, I don't know if I want to next year in high school. I don't know if I want to do band or guard. You should, I mean, you should really like take some time to consider this. Like don't just listen to it an Instagram influencer or anything like that. Don't just be like, oh, Jackie said be on guard because she's on guard. Like, like you really should take the time to decide what you want to spend your time on because you are going to have to practice a lot if you are in, um, in guard. So can I put your stickers on the outside of my car? Ooh, yes. If you get the the free stickers that you get from us, if you like send us a self-addressed stamped envelope and we send you some free stickers, uh, several of our members have stuck our stickers on the outside of their car and they seem to hold up really well. <laughs> so uh, I wore all my Spintronic stuff yesterday while practicing. Yay. If you guys wear Spintronic stuff and you have like posted on YouTube or posted on what? Well, Instagram or TikTok or wherever, tag me. I love to see our Spintronic stuff like out in the world. I mar might march with UCF Pegasus. Oh, congrats. UCF Pegasus is amazing. Uh, thank you for helping me build up these skills. You are so welcome. Uh, band for two years or guard for two years, the best of both worlds. I mean, it's up to you. You really got to, I mean, decide what you want to do. Is that is, and, and also, is this something you're going to do for the rest of your life? Because if it's, if you're planning on doing something like for me, when I was in high school, I was planning on going into veterinary medicine. And I was kind of like, I don't know what I want to do. So I did guard and I was in and I was like dancing and I was in choir and I did a lot of things. And I wasn't planning on doing any of them as like my long term uh, career. So I did a lot of things. And, and I think you should too. Like you should definitely experiment in a lot of things if you have the opportunity to because you don't really know what you want. Yeah, if you want stickers, send us a self-addressed stamp envelope. Uh, P.O. Box 141, Mountain View, Missouri, 65548. There's lots of... If you go to our Instagram and you go to the highlights, there is a highlight just about the free stickers, and it's got our our, our mailing address in there and, like, instructions and stuff. So, 
March flute one year, baritone two years, now I'm in guard. Yeah, like, honestly, just do whatever. Try it all out. Try it all. It's definitely good for you to try it out, especially when you're young. It would be an amazing spirit. You'll be in Carmel. I do. I have heard of Carmel. I plan on doing guard forever. Yes. <laughs> and you can do guard forever. It's cool. Like, like not all sports you can do forever and ever for your whole life. But color guard is something like you can definitely do color guard even after like your body falls apart and your knees are broken and your shoulder is broken, which is what happened to me. You can still go and like do color guard and teach color guard and, and be in parades and stuff like we're, we do alumni parades and things like that all the time. March bass clarinet for a year and found guard. Yes. Yes. I love seeing band kids who are like, I joined band. And then I liked, I saw the guard and I was like, yay, color guard. And, and I also love to see guard people who are like, you know, I'd rather play an instrument. Like that's so cool to see people like finding their thing that they're passion, passionate about. Uh, how do I like taping my saber? Do I like candy cane in two layers? Uh, I do. Okay. So normally, yes, normally I tape my saber. I like to do a basket weave, which is a candy cane one direction on the way out and a candy cane the other direction on the way in. I feel like it gives me a good grip and a good balance and everything. Um, however, you'll notice that I have not taped my king saber because I don't need to. I don't want to. <laughs> it's shiny and pretty and I paid a lot of money for it. So I want it to stay, like I want to be able to see it at all times. So I got a new gym where I am and I'm excited to be able to practice there. That's so good. Yes, having a gym to practice is like, such a treat. It's like a, a privilege for people. Like I, I don't even know. It's, it's so fantastic. Band and guard gang. Yes. Band and guard gang. Honestly, well-rounded individuals right there. Um, okay. I'm going to go guys. I need to go spend some time with my husband. He's been so patiently waiting for me to get off of social media and it is, it's been awesome talking to you guys. Um, Again, like I said, this was the history of Color Guard, and hopefully you guys learned some stuff from it. If you didn't get to hear the whole thing, if you're watching the live, go back and watch from the beginning, because uh, there's some good stuff. Bye, guys. Okay, don't forget, like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. <laughs>